Okay, good afternoon and uh, hello everybody. So nice to have you in our session this afternoon. It has just gone 12 o'clock and uh, we're about to jump into some great tips and tricks for Microsoft 365 on your Mac. So I hope you're doing well. I hope you are ready for our session. Uh, let's maybe just cover one or two things before we get started. So firstly, again, hello, my name is Marius. Nice to be with you. And uh, yeah, you can use the chat panel. So let me know where you are joining from this afternoon. It's quite a cold one, I must say. It is really chilly today, so uh, let me know where you are this afternoon. I hope you are warm. Uh, secondly, you can see also on the screen there that uh, you can engage with us, so even ask us some questions. So if you want to use the Q&A panel in Zoom, then uh, that's going to be great. We'll try and get to your questions. Also, by the way, if anyone is interested to become a host of their own, then uh, definitely reach out to us uh, using the email address on the screen, and we'd really like to hear what you have to share with the Apple community. And finally, you can also use the hashtag iStoreMeets and uh, by sharing, you can win. So uh, put some tips on Facebook or Instagram and remember to tag us. And uh, there's some great prizes to be won. So I see a lot of you are saying hello from all over. I've got uh, Cape Town and Pretoria and Johannesburg. And uh, really, I think all of you uh, hopefully got something warm, but uh, hopefully the session is going to keep you occupied for the next hour or so. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly stop sharing and uh, actually put my screen on so we can see some of the same things and then take you through some of the uh, great tips and tricks that you can use on your Mac with uh, Office 365. So uh, let me actually do exactly that and get my screen on so we can all see the same thing. There we go. And uh, hopefully you're seeing my screen so I can show you some of these things we're talking about today. So uh, let us know also in the chat, by the way, uh, which Mac you have, if you're using Office already, uh, maybe some of your thoughts and ideas around that. But again, I think the first thing to talk about this afternoon is uh, if you don't have Office yet, is maybe just to quickly remind you where to go and find it. So uh, it is really straightforward on your Mac you can simply get it from the App Store. So you don't have to browse the web. You don't have to uh, go to funny places. You're simply going to go and search for something like Word on the App Store. And you can see there it is right there for you to download and uh, start using. By the way, also you can, uh, you can buy the Office 365 or the Microsoft 365 uh, license in iStore. So if you want to get yourself activated, then uh, there's also something uh, you can do in store. By the way, just so you know, if you download these from the web or from the app store, like you can see here, they will install. Um, you'll be able to read documents, but you will only be able to read or view and not edit. So if you want to do what we're going to be doing today, then you need to get the subscription. All right, so uh, let's jump in. I see a couple of you are saying you've got uh, a Mac mini with M1, that's great. I can see some of you using all of the products. Um, so iPhone, iPad, and Mac with the uh, Office 365. So that's great. Obviously we're focusing on the Mac version today, but a lot of things are gonna be quite similar across the various products. So uh, let's start talking about uh, some of the great things and I'm gonna start with PowerPoint. So uh, I hope a lot of you um, use PowerPoint already, or maybe you're doing some presentations and you just want to take your presentations up a level. So there's a lot to talk about in terms of what you can do with the software. So we don't have time to cover all of that today. So I think what I'll do is I'll just focus on a couple of little tips and tricks and hints to, uh, to really make your presentations stand out. So uh, let me go and uh, open up PowerPoint for us to start. So there we go, Microsoft PowerPoint. And uh, as you can see, if you get started with PowerPoint, you'll get some themes to get you going. So there's some great looking themes and uh, it really gives you a starting point. For our session today though, I'm quite happy for us to start with a blank presentation and maybe just look at a couple of things together. So I'm gonna actually do that right there. Start with the blank presentation and also maybe just uh, fill up the screen a little bit so uh, we can see more of what is happening over here. In fact, I might actually just uh, move that a little bit closer or close it down so I can still see your chats on the side. Otherwise, I might just miss something if someone is uh, actually saying anything uh, in the chat. Okay, so uh, I think we'll give ourselves a bit of a, a theme for today. So let's go with uh, something random. So organic food, <laughs> right? And uh, let's just call it for, there we go, I store. Meets. 
Okay, so as a starting slide, you can see I've just got some text. It's pretty straightforward, uh, quite plain and boring at this stage. So let's start by adding a few things to see what you can do. And uh, one of the first things I want to show you is uh, obviously adding images to your presentation is going to make a big, big difference in terms of just that visual element, what people see and how they experience your presentation. So you can go ahead and uh, obviously find images that you have already. But what I want to show you is a great place that you can find some really awesome images. So if I go to the insert um, ribbon on, on, on PowerPoint, you can see I've got the picture option. And there's a few options for me, but I want to show you this one here, which is called stock images. So really within PowerPoint directly, I can go ahead and actually find things that I'm looking for. So in this case, we're talking about food, right? So uh, let me show you how this works. I'm simply gonna type in the word food and see what comes up. You can see there's a whole bunch of things that I think I can use in my presentation. So, so granted, these might not be necessarily be organic, but uh, let's pretend for a second that uh, this is all fine for my presentation. So let me grab a few of these and uh, even this one here of the berries. Okay, so we've got a couple of um, pictures we want to include. So let me insert the four of them. So I tap on the bottom where it says insert. And as you can see, it kind of puts them all together on uh, really over on top of each other. But really, this takes me to my second great thing in terms of using uh, PowerPoint is not only can you access some of these images really easily, but also you've got something there which just popped up, which says design ideas. And really, this is like, it has to be one of the coolest things, right? So by the way, if it doesn't pop up for you automatically, what you can do is you can you just go to this little tell me little, um, I guess, uh, light bulb and uh, just type in what you want. So design, and you can see there's the option right there. And uh, it'll then open up for you as well. So once you've got design ideas open, you can literally browse through and find what you're looking for. Just look at some of these amazing options. I've got uh, maybe just a bit of a shape there with the four images scattered in the quadrants. Um, I've got different designs here. I must say, I must be honest, I quite like this one here. <laughs> so if I had to do this one manually, I think maybe just think for a second, how long it would take you to create something like this? You could, right? Um, but it'll take you a couple of minutes. And the point is you're saving time here by having PowerPoint do all the hard work for you. So go and browse around. You can see there's a whole bunch to choose from. You can even have more ideas if you go to the bottom and it'll even show you more different options. And also what's quite nice about this is that it's dynamic. So it's gonna keep on changing as you add things. If you add more text, for instance, it's gonna suddenly give you more ideas and really always give you some great options to look at. So design ideas is great for a nice starting point, right? Um, let's actually go ahead and uh, add a few more slides and see what else we can do. So I'm gonna go into the insert um, ribbon, tap on add new slide, and I'm simply gonna add a blank slide because I'm gonna show you one or two other things that uh, hopefully you'll find impressive. I'm just gonna close design ideas for the second since we're not gonna need it. Um, I guess we'll add maybe another photo here. Let's try and find something that's got a few different things to show off. So I'm gonna go with, um, I think we have to find something organic, <laughs> right? But uh, it kind of does can limit me a little bit, but let's go with, let's actually put in something like farm. Let's say we wanna find maybe some images of a farm. So I'm gonna have different images here. And uh, there you can go, you can see quite a few things. So let's go ahead and maybe just uh, put this one over, hmm, which one shall we go with? Let's just go with this one over here for now. So insert that one photo. And you can see it's going to pop onto my slide. And again, design ideas might pop up and allow you to actually say, well, what do you want to do with this? You might want to make it full screen. So that's actually going to be a good idea. So let's do that. But uh, what I want to show you is in terms of working with images, there's a, actually a better way of just showing an image and maybe showing a different image. You can actually also pan and zoom in your images and make them very nicely animated to really keep the attention of your viewer as you go through different slides. So in this case, we've got a photo of, uh, you know, some people on a farm, you know, doing some work with plants, et cetera. So what I'm gonna do firstly, to show you the options here is I'm gonna duplicate the slide. So I wanna have a few versions of this. So we're simply gonna right click on the slide, click on where it says duplicate. And you can also use that little shortcut if you want to. And I'm gonna actually give a few here. So let me show you exactly how this works. And you'll see why in a second I'm doing this, right? So you can see I've got four versions of the same slide because really what I want to do is I'm going to focus on different areas or maybe people within that image. So uh, what can we do now? I'm going to just close that little stock image tab for a second. 
and actually just zoom out a little bit so I can see more because on my second image, so on the second one of those people on the farm, I'm actually going to expand on that photo to give it a bit of a zoomed in view, right? So I'm simply going to drag on one of those corners. And uh, what you want to do also at this stage is maybe just look on the left hand side, you can see it shows you the preview, what you will be seeing as I zoom in. So let's say for a second, we want to look at some of the people that is involved in this organic farm, right? So in this picture, we're going to show maybe this lady over here. Um, I'm going to go to the next image, which is still on the smaller version and really do the same thing. So zoom this in quite a bit. And maybe I'm going to drag it to the other side to focus on maybe that gentleman and uh, the lady on that side of the image. And then finally, you can see we're back to the normal image. So how does this actually help me? You're saying, well, I, I don't I don't see where you're going with this. <laughs> so if I had to play it now, it'll simply go from that image to that one, to that one. And uh, obviously back to the um, original one. So what I want to show you is a very interesting transition. It's called Morph. And uh, what Morph can do in PowerPoint is essentially animate between your slides. So whatever you have on slide number one, and you duplicate that slide into slide number two, whatever you have on those two slides, you can then change things like the position, the scale, you can move things around, and it'll automatically animate between them. So let me show you how to do this. I go into that version there with the lady, even the one there with the, with the uh, couple of people on the right, and then back to the third one as well, where we see everyone. And once I've got those three slides selected, I simply go to the transition option on the top, and you'll see there's an option there that says morph, <laughs> right? So uh, check it out, I'm gonna click on that. And as you can see, it's gonna give us a very nice little kind of zoom effect. So let's play this, play this back. I want you to see what this looks like. So I'm gonna to go to that one slide over there, click on the uh, play button in PowerPoint. And uh, for instance, if we're going through this presentation and maybe wanna focus on these two people, I can now click on my spacebar to move to the next slide. You can see it's gonna zoom in to that person. And then if I click on the spacebar one more time, it's gonna pan over to those people. And if I click on it one more time, it's gonna go over and give us the overview one more time. So uh, so that's one of the things I want to show you in terms of using Morph to actually zoom into photos and objects and kind of use that to uh, create a bit of interest on your presentation. Okay, so uh, I see uh, someone's asking here, how did I make it full screen? What is the shortcut? Um, Brian, there are a couple of things maybe to show you real quick. So you know the green button on the top left is it's going to take it full screen. But if you press down option and you click on the green button, it's going to only expand it throughout the big screen. So it's not going to make it into a full screen app. It's just going to expand it to the full screen. So hopefully that's the question you were asking there, Brian. Hopefully that answers your question. So uh, we've spoken about uh, some design ideas. We looked at inserting some stock images using an, a great transition, transition called Morph. What I want to show you now is also using Morph in a different way. So uh, let me add another slide to show you what we can do. Um, additionally, go back to the insert menu and I'm gonna add another slide. So let's go back with a blank slide. And uh, let's also just make our canvas a little bit bigger so we can actually see what is happening here. So what I wanna show you is using some of the built-in 3D models within PowerPoint. And uh, these are really impressive. I must say, I really enjoy using some of these in my presentations. So what you need to do is you uh, click on this little 3D models option. And uh, it's gonna take a second to load and give you essentially a bit of a library of things that you can use. In our case, we're looking for maybe something specific, right? So let me go with onion, right? So I wanna maybe look for some of the onions in terms of this. You can see there's two options. I'm gonna simply go with that half onion and insert it. And you'll see in a second how I can actually use this. So it'll take a second to download. These objects are slightly larger than uh, normal, but uh, if you've got a decent internet, it should uh, hopefully not take too long. So uh, first thing that's really cool is these things are interactive. You can see I can drag it around and uh, you know, obviously there's all kinds of shapes and objects in there. So whatever your topic is, you'll hopefully find something that's gonna relate to your topic. But in my case, let me show you for instance, just having that onion there like so, and uh, I wanna show you how we can now use Morph. So if you remember, to use Morph, you need to duplicate that slide. So put that slide in one more time. It's really the same slide twice, but on the second slide, I can then go and make changes. So again, I can then actually turn this onion around. Let's say we wanna see that side and I can even rotate it a little bit like so. I can enlarge it. 
right? So let's say those are the two options. We're going to start there and we're going to end there. So here is where it gets really amazing. So if I apply morph one more time, go to transitions and I click on morph, what you'll see is it's going to start there and my onion is simply going to flip around and show me the uh, other side of the onion. So obviously you can do this with anything. You can move things around. You can have them start on the left-hand side, end up on the right, change scale. And if you're using 3D, you can even, even turn them around, which is uh, pretty impressive. I see uh, Brian saying that was what you needed. So uh, no problem. Thank you, Brian. Hope uh, help, uh, happy that we can uh, sort you out on that question. Okay, so uh, what else can we do here, right? Maybe you want to draw something, add a bit of a... Uh, I don't know, maybe a little plant that you want to hand draw or an arrow or something. So PowerPoint has got some great tools for that as well. So if I go to the draw um, ribbon, you can see there's all kinds of tools I can use right over there. Um, I'm not going to use them today. I'm going to show you something else. But I did want to point out that these are available. So if nothing else, you can use these. And you can, you can even use your trackpad to, uh, to draw those little things. Uh, there's two other options I want to talk about, though, which I think is really going to elevate that. <laughs> so the first one is if you have an iPad connected as well on the same network, you can do something called Sidecar with your Mac. So this is where these two devices can work together. So what you would do, you would go to the window menu. And you can see there's an option there that says move to iStore meets iPad Pro, which means this whole presentation will actually appear on my iPad. and I can then use my Apple Pencil to draw using those same tools you can see on the top there, I can select them on my iPad and actually draw directly on the screen. That's one way of doing it. Um, I wanna show you another way, which uh, is probably my preferred way. So uh, if I wanna add, let's say some, some drawing or something here, what I can do is I can simply right click on the slide, check it out. And towards the bottom, you'll see I got an option, which is the one I wanna point your attention to, which says import from iPhone or iPad. And uh, by the way, you can do this either with an iPhone or an iPad. So if you only got an iPhone with you, you can then use your iPhone to sketch. If you have an iPad, I think even better, because then you can use the Apple Pencil, obviously, to maybe have even more precise drawings. So uh, let me do that, and I'll show you how this works. I'm going to go and where it says Add Sketch from my iPad Pro. And you'll see it says Use your iPad to sketch. So essentially, I've got my iPad right here. I'm going to grab my Apple Pencil and uh, let's quickly just go and, I don't know, draw like a little mini plant or something. So a little stem, a um, couple of leaves, and uh, it's really not the best plant, so you're going to have to forgive my, my drawing skills. But uh, as soon as I tap on Done now on my iPad, see the magic here, right? Tap on Done. And you can see there it appears on my presentation. So uh, what I can do, I can actually go and, uh, you know, reposition this. Uh, make this a little bit larger. I can animate it in if I wanted to. So uh, hopefully you, you've got some better drawing skills and you can actually draw a proper little plant or something. I might have to go practice this a little bit. But can you see the power of this, right? So using your iPad in connection or in conjunction with your Mac to do little things like this. So it's really going to help you out to kind of get things done. So, uh, so that's adding a little drawing. And uh, by the way, if you have some of these devices, uh, I suggest you go test it out, right? So see how it works and play around so you can also make use of this. So uh, I think our presentation is, uh, is looking, looking good. There's maybe one or two things I wanna add here as a couple of final steps. I'm thinking about a very nice way to reveal our presentation. So what about if we can almost have our presentation hidden and then as we start, we have a very nice way to reveal, let's say our organic foods presentation. And the way I'm gonna do this is go back to my very first slide and I want to show you another transition, which is really one of my favorites. Check this out. I've got to transition. And it doesn't show up on the top here, so you might have to click on this little button to show more. But you'll see there's a few, and the one I'm talking about is the one that says curtains. So have a look how this changes in terms of my reveal. So I click on curtains. You can see it kind of have these uh, black curtains that is uh, kind of revealing the slide behind. So the reason it's black is because really there's nothing in front of it. So I've got my organic food slide as my very first slide. So the curtain reveal is going to use almost just nothing, in this case black, to reveal it. So you could go in and make some, change, some changes. Let me show you. I'm going to insert another slide. So let's insert another blank slide and maybe just move that to the top. So if I had to play that back one more time, you can already see there's gonna be a difference. If I go back to transitions, um, curtains, have a look at 
how that now actually shows you even some of those details, the wrinkles, the shadows in that curtains. It's actually pretty impressive in terms of <laughs> seeing how well that works. So if you want to take it even a step further than that, let's say you actually want real curtains, and this could even be your company logo or if anything else, um, you could go ahead and go back to our insert options, go back to the stock images, and I'm actually going to search for a picture of some curtains. So check this out. So I'm going to say, you know, curtain. Let's see what we find. There is a whole bunch. So let's go with this one here. Insert that into my presentation. And uh, Design Ideas will ask me to make it full screen. Yes, thank you very much. So uh, let's actually now have a look at what this looks like with some actual curtains as that first line. So go back here. Let's preview that transition and I simply click on it over there. And you can see now this time we've got actual curtains revealing our slides. So, uh, so pretty cool in terms of how you can do that. I wouldn't suggest you use this all the time. It's uh, probably just for those presentations that you really feel you can, you can do that. So um, let's see, I've got uh, someone asking a question here. Um, is the right click only available with a mouse or is there a way to do it without a mouse. Um, definitely, if you're using a MacBook Pro or a MacBook or a MacBook Air, you can definitely do that. You just need to click with two fingers. So if this is uh, maybe something you haven't tried before, then I suggest you just try that out. So instead of tapping or clicking with one finger, you just can click with two. And that's how I get the little menu. And that is also where I found that option to import from my iPhone or iPad. So uh, hopefully that is gonna help you out there in terms of that question. Okay, so our presentation is looking good. I'm pretty happy with what we got. Um, in your case, you're probably gonna have other things in there and maybe some tables and charts and more information, but hopefully just some of these little tips and tricks in terms of working with images and transitions and especially the morph one is gonna allow you to elevate kind of the way that your presentation appears and the way you can actually deliver it. But uh, talking about delivery, I want to show you a great little feature in PowerPoint, and this is really to help you get the best practice to so you can deliver a great presentation. So I think you'll all agree having a good presentation from uh, the actual slides is only part of the story, right? The other story is being able to deliver it really well. So PowerPoint has got a, a new tool to help you on that. And uh, let me show you how this works. I'm going to go to the uh, slideshow menu on the top. And you'll see there's something that says rehearse with a coach. So imagine you are sitting down with someone and they're going to actually monitor what you're saying, how fast you're going. Um, essentially, this is what you'll get, right? It's going to be a virtual coach that uh, kind of helps you out with this. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to click on where it says rehearse with coach. It's going to go into my full screen presentation mode. And uh, what I can do now on the bottom right hand corner, let me just move my zoom windows around you can see there's an option that says uh, start rehearsing. You can even have it show real-time feedback. So as you say something like um too many times, it'll actually stop the presentation and say, it looks like you're saying um a lot, all right? And give you that feedback. I'm just gonna turn that off for now so we can uh, see what it uh, gives us at the end. And I'll intentionally maybe also put a couple of ums in there just so you can see what it does with that. So let's go and say start rehearsing. So welcome to our presentation today on organic food. I'm so happy you've joined us and uh, really excited to show you some of the great things when it comes to growing organic food yourself. So let's have a look at some of the uh, farmers that uh, help us with this. So you can see here's a couple of ladies and you can see they really are um, really actually excited to get some great food um, growing in their organic garden. You can see there's everyone again in the garden. And really this comes down to you being able to grow this yourself. So we'll talk about some ideas later on for you to get your own organic garden growing. Another thing I wanna show you is also maybe just some of the nutrients when it comes to uh, an onion. So I'm gonna actually slice this onion in half and show you all the things you can see inside there, potentially with regards to the nutritional information. So I'm gonna end it there because I just kind of did a bit of a random thing on the fly. So if I exit my presentation, uh, what you'll see is it brings up this little dialogue and uh, this is pretty cool. You'll see, it'll show you then things like your pace. So you can see in this case, it says my, my pace is just right, keep it up. So <laughs> this is something I actually do quite often. I go a little bit too fast 
So just by doing this and rehearsing it with a coach, you'll get that information and then be able maybe just to slow down a little bit, which is probably usually a good idea, right? It's not to go too fast. You'll see um, it picked up some filters there. So you can see on the, on the left-hand side, it says uh, some of the sounds that I was using or words, maybe a little bit too much. You can see it says I did use um there. Uh, let's see anything else, some refinements giving me some suggestions there, giving you option, options on pitch. So maybe also if you uh, speak a little bit too monotone, all right, the audience obviously might get a little bit bored after a while. So uh, it's nice to also see how you did in terms of all of that. So what we'll do is we'll close that and say thank you very much to our coach. And uh, hopefully all of you also can go and use that in your own presentations to just elevate what you're doing a little bit further. So uh, if there's any questions or any comments, let me know. Um, hopefully you guys can use some of these things. Um, I'd like, really love to hear some of your comments in terms of that. But we are going to move along because we've got a few more products to cover. That was PowerPoint. And uh, we're going to do the same with some of the other products. So let me close PowerPoint for the second and say we're not going to save you. Thank you very much. And uh, let's jump into, I think, Word, right? So obviously Word, a program that a lot of you use, I'm guessing, quite often. So it's probably a good idea for us to go and check out a couple of things in words. So I'm going to open this up. And uh, here we go. A brand new Word document. Again, some great templates to start you off with. So if you want to go and uh, find something to uh, just have a great starting point, I think it has you covered, right? Uh, lots of options there. But in our case, again, let's start with a blank document because we want to show you a couple of things that you can do using this. So uh, there we go. There's our blank document. And uh, let's give it the same theme, because as you remember, we're busy with organic food. So let's stick with that for even our Word document as well. So organic food. So uh, one of the things I want to show you, let me actually just quickly do one thing here before I get too far along. Um, so I can see your chats on the side. Yeah, I don't want it to go over some of the controls here in, in my version of Word. What I want to show you is on the very right hand side of the window that you'll see a little, little thing called style panes. And this is maybe something I just want to start off with in terms of showing you that this is very handy whenever you are busy putting a document together, because quite importantly, what you want to think about is consistency. Are you using the same fonts, for instance, when it comes to your headings and your body? And uh, what you can do is use these little guides almost uh, or templates or style guides to just make sure you stick with certain formatting. So fonts and sizes and colors and whatever else might be included. So as you can see, I went with title one there or just title. And as I move forward, it'll probably gonna go back to normal. And what also I like about this is you can also then make changes to your complete document. So let's say for instance, you've done this whole document, multiple pages, and then you realize actually I want to change the font. I wanted to change maybe something about it that wasn't exactly right. If you didn't use these little style guides, you might have to actually go and change a lot of that stuff manually. But by just updating your style, it'll then actually update all of those bits of text that you've used all over. So organic food, uh, let's also start with an image. I think just to show you how these things are the same across these different products. So let's go back to images and stock images. And I'm gonna type in that same option we did earlier, which was food, just so we have a bit of consistency here between our presentation and also our document. So let's insert that image over there. So yeah, that's fine. Um, I think when it comes to creating a document and I don't know if any of you are students, maybe you can raise your hand in Zoom or let me know if any of you are students, there's uh, some great features built in that is particularly great for students, which is you're probably gonna to have to do some research. You might have to go and find some information online about uh, organic food and use that, let's say, in your assignment, if it is an assignment that you are busy with. So there's an easier way to actually get this done. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So in Word, you go to uh, the top here, and uh, there's an option there that says References. So as I go to References, you'll see there's an option in the middle called Researcher. So this really does the hard work for you. <laughs> All you need to do is... Think about a topic, think about some ideas, and it'll actually go and find the information for you. It is really pretty awesome. So let's go and search for something here. So let's go with organic one more time. 
and uh, see what we get. So as you can see, you already get some hits, right? So we've got a few things in terms of relevant topics. We've got towards the bottom, you can see there's some journal entries that you can go and uh, also refer to. And even maybe just some information on websites that uh, was maybe relevant to your topic. So how this works is you will then go into any one of these and you can actually start using this information in your documents. So for instance, let's put our cursor on the left-hand side there. And uh, maybe you want to take some of this, like let's say this first paragraph, I can simply select it and you'll see it gives me two options there. I can add or add in site. So again, if you're doing an assignment specifically and you need to kind of make sure those references are in place, then you can definitely use the add in site option to, uh, to also get those references to show up. So I mean, let's get a couple of text, maybe uh, paragraphs that we want to add. So let's add this one as well, add in site. So obviously you can go through and research have the information come up on the side here and have a look at what is available. Use that within your document and hopefully be able to put something very compelling together. What you can do also, if, uh, if this again is a bit of an assignment, you can even put down those references in terms of where they come from exactly. So a bit of a bibliography. So how do we do this? You can see right there, it says bibliography and you can choose your style. So you can see there's different ones. And this obviously depends on the institution that you need to submit this to if you are doing something that uh, is going to be graded. But uh, for instance, I can then say, yeah, please do this. So go to bibliography and please look at the second one, which is going to be works cited. I simply just tap on it right over there. And you can see it's going to add it in for me exactly where those things are, where they are from, and also using the uh, the style that you need to put in using this drop down over here. So those are some great things that you can use just to get content. Right. So if you need to, uh, if you may be struggling to maybe write some of your, your ideas, you can obviously find some good ideas online. If you are going to be writing your own ideas, though, which I think a lot of us do most of the time. So if you are writing down things uh, all over your document that you need to, uh, I guess, type out, there's also a very nice option that you can use instead of typing to have Word dictate these things for you. And you, or you can actually rather dictate these things to Word and have it come up on the screen. So let me show you how this works and where to find it. And uh, hopefully this is something you can use as well going forward. So what you need to do is you go back to home and uh, you'll see all the way on the right-hand side, there is a little dictate button. And essentially this is how easy it is. You need to just uh, tap on that and start talking. So I'm just gonna stop that for a second so I can get myself ready. So let's make sure our insertion point is in the right place and you can then literally start talking. This is a test for me to dictate to Word on my assignment on organic foods. And you can see it kind of did all of that for me. So yeah, a bit of a time saver, right? So if you know what you want to put down and uh, you rather want to say it versus typing it, just so you can kind of have the train of thought and not lose some of those ideas as they're coming really quickly, then this is going to be something great to use. So definitely go and check that out. Uh, the other thing I want to show you maybe is also, maybe just while we're on this topic of uh, having things down and uh, having it do a good job, what about different languages? What about if you are doing a document that uh, is not only going to be available for maybe yourself, but maybe also need to make it available for another market? There's also a great feature built into Word to help you with this. And this is the translate option. So check it out. Um, uh, let's say this paragraph here needs to be translated. So I'm going to copy it. And uh, maybe just paste it over here to have a second version, because the second version we can have in a second language. So maybe our document needs both languages. So uh, let's do this. I'm going to select that whole paragraph. And uh, this time I'm going to go into the review tab to see some of the options, because now we're reviewing our documents and maybe just making some changes and translation is going to be one of those options. So you can see there's a translate button right over there. And uh, what I can do is say translate document and this is really impressive in terms of firstly you can see how quickly it works and also just the accuracy so it already picked up that i'm using english which i think was uh, pretty obvious but then you can uh, choose what language you want to translate into so i can choose chinese uh, you can see it's got even afrikaans and dutch and 
Hungarian, Italian. So really got a lot of options here. So let's kind of just leave it on Chinese for now because uh, maybe it is uh, more, quite impressive to see how it can do this. And the other thing I want to show you while we're here is as I kind of just move over words, you can see it shows you at the bottom the equivalent word on the translated bit. So you can see exactly what was translated and also it gives you more information right there. So you really make sure it did a good job. So uh, let's say we're happy with this. I can simply say insert, and you can see it's gonna change my paragraph to a, a Chinese version. So if that's something that's important to you, or maybe, maybe it's the other way around, maybe you received a document that came in a different language and you need to maybe use that information in a document that you're busy with. So you are the person that needs to, uh, I guess, translate, then this is a great time saver. I'm hoping for you as well. Okay, so uh, we looked at translate. There's uh, maybe one or two things maybe to talk about here still, because uh, I showed you earlier on PowerPoint, if you remember how we inserted a, a sketch from our iPad, but there's another thing there that is also quite handy quite often, which I use pretty much every now and then. And that is also to insert not just the sketch, but also a photo from another device. So for instance, let's say I want to take a photo directly from my, from my iPhone and have it appear on this document directly. And I don't wanna go and take the photo and then save it and then email it to myself or airdrop it. I wanna have a quicker way of doing that. So let's try that same function one more time. So I right click on this document. I go to the bottom where it says insert from iPhone and iPad. And this time I'm gonna choose the option that says take photo. So check this out, I'm gonna take photo. What happens is my iPhone actually uh, lights up. So the camera turns on on my iPhone and uh, let me take a photo of the screen. So since I don't really have a photo of organic food right here, but let me just uh, show you this as an example. I tap on use photo and you can see how it actually inserts that photo straight away into my document. So really convenient and easy in terms of how these products integrate. And that's part of what we're talking about today is not just using Office, for instance, the software and how it works, but also using it in the Apple ecosystem. So on a Mac, you know, what are some of those advantages? How can you have these things work together? to give you really the best experience for creating and uh, being productive. So, um, so that's looking pretty good. I am happy with that. <laughs> Let's pretend that this is a document that I'm really happy with. Um, there's another great feature I wanna show you, and this is also newish, which is uh, you can also focus on your work. So as you might imagine, there's all kinds of things on the screen and it might be a little bit distracting. So Word has got a mode to help you out with that. It's called focus. And you'll find it at the bottom of the screen. So let me just move my zoom window up again. So you'll see right on the bottom, it says focus. So that's one way to find it. Um, you can also find it uh, in other places. So for instance, if you go to the view mode, you can see there's also focus right over there. And what this will do, literally, and I'll show you, I tap on it, it'll take away everything else and leave you with just your contents. So again, if you are really needing to just focus and put down your ideas, and uh, not be distracted by anything else. This is gonna be great because I can actually go now and just start typing, maybe even dictating and having those things come up on the screen. By the way, if you wanna get out of that again, you just move your mouse up and you can see it brings back all the menus and you can still access them. So if you needed to go and quickly maybe change something or maybe a font or insert a table or something, you can still do it even within focus mode. But I think it's quite nice in terms of giving you that option to have that uh, very simplified interface so it doesn't distract at all from what you're trying to do. So I'm gonna exit photo focus mode for a second. And uh, I think one of the, maybe the final things I wanna show you in Word is also like, how do we get help? Let's say you can't find that focus mode and you're kind of looking all over and you're not sure where to find it. Uh, I do wanna show you also on a Mac how the help menu is really your friend. So whenever you're trying to find something and you're not sure where it is, you're not sure where those menus are, uh, what you can do is simply go to the help menu and just start typing what you're after. So let's let's do focus as an example. So I'm typing focus and you can see it gives you a couple of options. But I want to show you the one that says menu items, how handy this is. I can simply go down and hover my mouse over that option and it'll show me literally with a big, big blue arrow and say, well, here it is. Here is the focus option you were looking for. And, uh, you know, quite often because a lot of these applications have lots of little menus and menus within menus. And sometimes finding the right tool is a little bit hidden. So uh, definitely use that if you're ever stuck so you can find whatever you're after really easy and, uh, and quickly.
So uh, that is uh, some of the things we wanted to chat about when it comes to Word. So uh, we are going to move along. But by the way, if there's any, any more questions or comments, I see uh, someone had a question and uh, it was answered for you automatically. So that is good. Um, let me close Word here. And so we don't want to save this for now. And let's open up another popular app, which I think a lot of you do use quite often. And of course, I'm talking about Excel. So let's go and find, oopsie, there we go. Excel for Mac and uh, open this up. So there is our Excel um, starting point again, some uh, great places to start with, but uh, let's go and just go and open a blank work uh, workbook. So click on create. So just to show you what we did earlier, by the way, so I think someone was asking, how do we go into full screen mode? So this green button goes into full screen. So I just want to show you this difference that it's going to go completely full screen, which is great because it gives me more space to work on when I want to do that. If I do it the other way, if I just press option while I click on the green button, it's just going to expand full screen, but not go into full screen mode. And then the uh, maybe the next thing I want to show you just on here, maybe you're working with multiple documents. And, and I think this happens quite often. You've got two Excel sheets and you want to work on the one, reference some data, maybe copy it over. So how do you effectively manage those multiple windows? So uh, let me open another Excel spreadsheet. So you can see I've got two open. And uh, what you can do is instead of clicking on that little green, green button, you just hover over it and you can see it gives me a couple of options. And again, there's two ways of doing this. So the first one is if you just hold down option, you can see it changes from tile to move. So what it'll do it, let's say we want to put this one on the left-hand side, we can do that. And then on this one, we can do the same. We can hover, um, those options hopefully will appear. Um, and you can put this one on the right-hand side. You can see I've now tiled these two windows very evenly between the two sides. The other way to do that is simply to go in, not hold an option, and this will take it into full screen, which allow you to have both of them in full screen mode. And then you've got this little slide in the model that you can move between them. So if you want to see a little bit more of the left-hand side or a little bit more of the right-hand side document, you can then simply just use a little slider to essentially split your screen. So those are the options. And I just wanted to show you that to you because I think quite often it is the case where you're trying to manage multiple windows and then you close one and minimize one and you move them around. There's actually an easy way just to do it quick and easy like this. So uh, let's go back to our single document and I'm just going to go out of full screen mode and take it back into maybe just the side here so I can see the document and also see your chats. <laughs> Okay, so what are some of the things we can talk about when it comes to Excel? So again, this is not the session that we're going to do things like VLOOKUPs and pivot tables and show you all the things how to do that. That essentially is a session on its own. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do is just show you a couple of tips and tricks, I think, to either if you're new to Excel, to uh, maybe just uh, introduce you to some of the easy things you can do with your data. Or secondly, if you're used to Excel, maybe just uh, show you one or two options when it comes to also improving your, your style of work. So uh, we've got a blank presentation here. I think let's fix that. We need some sample data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little option under the Home tab, which says Analyze Data. And the only reason I'm doing this is because there's an option down there that says Try Sample Data, <laughs> which allows me to put a couple of things in here so we can work with the data. OK, so as you can see here, we have got a whole bunch of data. Uh, it looks like there's categories like bikes and components and clothing. We've got products, we've got sales, we've got ratings and also years. So I think a pretty standard set of data, right? So obviously you can go and sort those and filter those. But uh, what I want to show you is maybe going back to the thing we were a second ago where it says analyze data. There's some great built-in tools where you can use the built-in intelligence to kind of do the hard work for you. So. I, I kind of do this actually quite often. I have all this data, I need to do a pivot table and I kind of do it manually, right? I always go and do this manually. But the point is, there's actually easier ways to do this. So go back to where it says analyze data. And uh, you can see there's a few things that is uh, being shown you already. So it says, well, looking at the data that is on the screen, what do you want to do? For instance, you can insert a pivot table based on some of these pre-made little charts and graphs. So uh, you can even then, do something like, um, uh, I think, filter and use that little bar on the top to actually break down the data. So you can see on the left-hand side, we've got sales and stuff. So let's say we only want to see, let's say, the 
total sales for 2017. That's all you need to do is you type that in, check it out. So I can go, oops, just to go back there. Total sales for 2017 or 2017. And you can see what it'll do. It'll actually give you the answer. How cool is this? So instead of you having to go and filter those columns and quickly do a sum of 2017, you can use this analyze data function to quickly give you the results that you're after and simply just type out what you're after. So almost like in normal English, you'd say, I want to see um, the percentage of this or the total of this and kind of it will do the rest for you. So uh, I'm going to cancel this and maybe show you some of the other things we can do. So as you can see, um, it gives you all these options to make these pre-made pivots. So let's go and insert this one down at the bottom here, which is all the, the categories um, showing you per category, I guess, what the sales were. So I'm simply going to click on where it says insert pivot chart. And what this will do, it'll create a new um, a tab or a sheet and uh, give me my little pivot table and also give me the chart to go along with it. So pretty cool, right? And for those of you who still want to go and tweak this in terms of changing some of those very specific things, you can still do that. So I just need to click on my pivot table or my, um, my data. You can see on the top there, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got an option that says um, pivot table um, analysis. And this is obviously where you can see those, I think more familiar little col columns, et cetera. To, uh, to see how your data got formatted in the way that it is currently showing. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. So I wanna show you one or two more things. And I think this is also important when it comes to working with your files and especially like Excel files that you might wanna spend a lot of time on. Um, it could be like days worth of data and uh, maybe sometimes you forget to save or you wanna revert back to a previous version or something. So. One of the things I wanna show you is uh, you can obviously save this document. So if I press on Command S, it's gonna allow me to save it. But if you save it in the cloud, so if you save it onto Microsoft OneDrive, essentially, there's a couple of benefits that come along with that. So I definitely suggest this is something you start doing. Instead of saving the, the documents on your computer directly, start saving it in something like OneDrive. So you can see it, uh, this one will be actually saved in OneDrive. So if yours is looking slightly differently, just make sure you navigate to your OneDrive folder. And I'm just gonna call it book one and click on save. So what it now does, apart from just saving it there, you can see it actually tells me already on the top that it says automatically saving. So, okay, that's great. So I don't have to go and keep on pressing Command S, Command S, Command S every five minutes because actually it'll just do it for me in the background. That's one thing. Um, secondly, what you can do with this is you can then start to do things like share and uh, so you can collaborate and also uh, maybe get some comments from your colleagues. So if I click on the share button, for instance, you'll see I've got uh, invite people. So this is, if you do it this way, you have to send it to their email address and very specific people will be invited and only they will be able to access your document. Probably an easy way to do it is just to copy the link. So you can see there's an option that says copy link and uh, I can then either do this to view or to view and edit. So you simply copy that link, you uh, send it to a colleague and you ask them maybe to collaborate with you on the document. So they can start opening up the same document on their side and then also you can see there's an option that it says comments and I, I find this really helpful. So as we are looking at the data together, maybe we're collaborating. What we can do is you can select an object like a cell here, go back to comments and you can start making comments on that, right? So I can say like, you know, is this, uh, you know, number correct? And I can post this. And in this case, I'm just doing this with myself because I don't have any collaborators. <laughs> but obviously, if you've got multiple people working on this document, they can all see those little comments come through and we can more effectively work on this document. So hopefully that's going to help you to, uh, to get the most from, from that um, and be a little bit more productive. The, uh, the next thing I want to show you is something that's new in Excel, which I think is truly uh, a great feature. So let me make another sheet here and show you what I'm talking about. So we spoke about, let's go back to our original theme, right? So we're looking at, you know, organic um, food. And I'm going to just jot down a couple of types of food, right? So let's go with, you know, apples and, you know, oranges. Let's go with pears and Grapes, right? So I've got a few things jotted down. And uh, what I'm actually after is I need to know, let's say the nutritional information on these different ones. And I need to know 
what is the vitamin A for apples compared to oranges, compared to pears, compared to grape? So I can obviously go and quickly make those uh, headings. So let's go with vitamin A and uh, vitamin C. So how do I find this information? I'm obviously going to have to go back to the internet, right? And source different websites and try and find these things and then copy it in. But there's actually something built into Excel that allows you to have that information literally directly available to you on those objects. So how does this work? It's pretty cool. So what I need to do is simply select them. So I'm going to go apple, oranges, pears, and grapes. And I've selected the four of them. So now if I go into the data ribbon, you can see I've got uh, some options here, but this one here in the middle, you can see this allows me to choose a data type. So I've got stocks and currencies, and maybe this is why I've always missed it because it looks like something quite mundane. But if I actually expand that, you can see there's other things. I can do anatomy, animals, chemistry, cities, uh, people even, but let's go with food since we are talking about food. So I click on the option, which is food. It'll take a second or two because obviously it is now linking these things to like a data set. And you can see it's slightly changed. I've got these little icons that now appeared in front of my different food types. So firstly, if I click on the little icon, it's going to say, well, Apple is what you <laughs> said. And uh, it's going to give you all these things, right? So you can see there's, for instance, calories and fats and vitamins and nutrients and all these things. So it's going to be easy for me to actually go in here and find different things. But even better, what you can do is you can add them as different columns. So check it out. If I go towards the right-hand side, there's a little drop down over here. I can simply just tap on that and say, okay, well, what do you want to insert? What is the data type that you are looking for? So for instance, uh, let's go with vitamin A, right? You can see it's got a percentage of one. I'm not sure exactly what that breaks down to, but uh, you can probably go and explore that more. And also let's put in vitamin C. You can see it's got 2.4. So all we need to do now really essentially is copy those two things and then go ahead and paste it below. So we can kind of just have those same formulas come through. And you can see there it gives me all the data in terms of vitamin A and vitamin C for apples, oranges, pears, and grapes. And you can see, yeah, it looks right because uh, oranges we know has got lots of vitamin C and this seems to to co collaborate or corroborate that, uh, that theory rather, right? So you can see there, it shows you exactly that. So uh, that's something I think you can go explore with. So whenever you're putting data um, types into Excel and uh, maybe there's something that pops up in terms of, there's actually more to this that you know that you can have Excel give you the answers for. And uh, I suggest you go and see how you can make use of those. So uh, let's see. Um, see a couple of questions coming through so here's a question i think on saving to the cloud which is uh, where does one save the document which can be accessed at a later stage without having an internet connection so so if you save it like if i save it right now to the cloud it'll save to the cloud and it'll kind of be available for me on not just this device but all of my devices but secondly it also saves a copy for you or your cloud copy is also available for you later on so even if i disconnect from the internet right now that offline version is still available. So I can still go and find the document and make changes to it. It's just, it won't uh, then allow me to collaborate anymore with some of the people that I'm busy with. But at least if I've saved it, because if I, let me quickly show you actually, because uh, I guess that is something that you might want to see if I go to the finder um, and I go into my documents folder, you can see there is my OneDrive. There's my documents and our Excel file should be there, right? So this is the one. And you'll see there's a little, like, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little gr green tick right next to it, which means it's also um, up to date and also available offline. So if I had to uh, sever my connection to the internet, I can still continue to work on a document. And later on, when I reconnect, it'll simply just update and make sure that version is also up to date in the cloud. So um, let's see. I see uh, Sibu is also asking about uh, recording this. Yes, indeed. So we are recording the session. So I'm happy to say, that hopefully in a day or two will make this available for you to go and watch on YouTube. But uh, I think up to that point, we are pretty much done with what I wanted to share with you. So it is a quick session and uh, it's all about some extra tips and tricks to uh, make you more productive using uh, Office 365 or rather Microsoft 365 on your Mac. And I really hope there's one or two things that you can take from this and start implementing and using already in your own work and on your own projects.
So if there's any more questions, I'm happy to hang around for a few seconds. But uh, other than that, I think the only thing that remains for me to say is thank you very much for joining our session today on Microsoft on Mac. I uh, really hope that we see you in another session real soon. Thanks, everybody, and uh, goodbye.